this year, it was just a weird feeling. We knew that if we played our game and we played well, we would come out victorious. It's the best kind of hockey. Two teams going at it one-on-one, -on -one. only one team can come out on the other side. We made a lot of great memories that night. Are we really doing this again? Like, this is amazing. And all of a sudden, eight months of, of grinding it out paid off. Last season, we knew that we had a good base of players. You know, we won two of the three trophies, and, and losing the playoffs left a very sour taste in our mouths. So, you know, the goal was to get better. We wanted to hold on to some key pieces to the team, uh, which we were able to do. But again, we had quite a big turnover. We felt we knew what we needed to do to have success in the league. That was a challenge this summer. It makes for a long summer when you are replacing half a team, but uh, you know. We, we liked where we were at. The countdown is on. Click here to buy. I always loved the start of the year, getting to know a new group of guys, and then obviously guys coming back in from the previous year. We had a lot of success. So, you know, I was extremely excited. Some guys really stood out. You had a couple who, you know, you thought, is this guy really going to make it? But after a few weeks, you know, Training camp, a couple of preseason games against Cardiff and Dundee, which we won all four games. Probably thought that uh, that we got a pretty decent team here. Coming into training camp, obviously everybody was excited for the Champions League. CHL is definitely a big feature of coming back. We knew it was going to be tough. We, we had a tough draw, but it doesn't matter. You know, we earned the right to be there. We were excited. The group was excited. When you play these Champions League teams, they're obviously coming from countries that are culturally, hockey is much more important than you know, Sweden, Czech Republic and Switzerland. And it's easy for boys to get up for those games, I think. It's easy to play to your best against those players, because you know if you don't, you're going to get pulverized. Cooper cuts in, trying to go high. It goes off the glove and in, and Cooper will take it. He comes in with the speed again, and he stopped. Giants win. Giants win. It was a good way to uh, start off the season, and that was a new experience for pretty much everyone. Maybe a few guys had played CHL before, but for the most part, everyone was wide-eyed uh, on those trips, and we kind of got to battle through it together. Coming out of Champions League and back into Challenge Cup play, I thought that there was going to be a bit of a lull just in terms of uh, the excitement, but I thought our guys were very good. We really pushed the guys on, on the importance of getting that home ice advantage if we were able to make it to the final. It's difficult for new guys coming into that environment because a lot of teams may look at the Challenge Cup as like a bit of a preseason, and they don't quite understand why the coach is losing his mind on the bench in a game in September when you've already qualified for the Challenge Cup. You're looking for those extra 1% everywhere, and that is a massive percentage difference when you have 7,500 people in the building cheering for you uh, to potentially that's the trophy on home ice. And the Guilford Flames are one up. Scott Conway with the goal! It's 1-1! One, one. Oh, what a finish that is! And the Flames extend their lead, that's 3-1. You know, we knew Guilford was going to be fast, a successful team. I thought we were the, the better team overall, but, but didn't win. We didn't come out on the right side of that uh, score line. Oh, it's finished off, it's a 4-2 now. I just remember them having a lot of speed and 
Um, it was hard to control their speed in the neutral zone. We really just got outskated and outcompeted that night. And the Flames lead by two now. The flex in, and it's a goal, and it's an equaliser. And score. Guildford this year, they had a, a really good team. And I think right off the start, when they beat us, I was like, I think they have a good squad, like they could be pushing it till the end. Come home and, and play against Cardiff at home here uh, is always going to be an exciting game. Boys wanted to make a statement and said, you know what, we're going for the league title again here. This is one of our opponents, it's going to stop us. Belfast looking at a guy, Todd, get a tackle! Steve Orange already got one. Lovely toe drag gets it in. Oh, it's a short handed goal! Steve Orange is second of the night. Orange, Orange with a rest start. Ari with a hat trick! Boy coming off the wall, a shot in front, that's tipped, oh my word! It's tipped in, it's 9-1. I am absolutely speechless, it's 9-1 against the Cardiff Devils. That was a big one for me. I think that was the first goal of the season so far and quite a few games in and that was a special night and then, um, you know, kind of just not looking back from there and, and, and pedal to the metal. I think that was one of the moments when we kind of said, Hey, we're we're for real this year. Like we can get it done. November was a bit of a test in time. We always seem to not have any availability in the arena because of concerts. I've always found the road trip in November to be something that either sets you up for success in the second half or can really put a, a damper on your league title chase. As the returning guys, we try to at least the best we can explain how, yeah, but in February and March, it's gonna come back around and we're gonna be spending a lot of time at the SSC. To get that stretch out of the way and get back to some home ice, I think was a key point for us to, you know, get us back to normal in the season. Manchester with the early goal. Ben Lick ties things up early in this second period. Great play there on the back door. What a finish by Scott Simmons. It's 4 2 to Manchester. That's going to go all the way down. And it's in the net. It's now 5-2, La Manchester Storm. Just wasn't a, a very good performance. Uh, frustration uh, was there from, from the entire group. Uh, you know, we, we tried to rectify it going into game two. Good enough that weekend, and it was it was embarrassing. We'd been away for so long, on the road playing away games. We come home, there's five thousand people in the building, and we laid an absolute egg. The Belfast Giants remain pointless here at the SSC Arena. There is a big stress put on at the start of the year by Kiefer, by captains. The league is the real deal here. Like, It can get away from you if you go through a season and you lose a few games here, you win a few, and it's like, you just can't be doing that. You have to win regularly all the time.
that became a big eye opener for Steve, myself, the coaching staff, as to potentially some changes need to be made to, to right this ship. We were all emotional in the coach's office, and I, I usually try to go in there to be positive if I can, but it was hard to take positives from that weekend. And I just felt at that time there needed to be another voice in the locker room. That was the first time I've ever seen him in the locker room. Well, sometimes it's nice to hear from a different voice. And the voice wasn't necessarily pointing with my finger. It was more pointing with my thumb. Like, it was an ownership of, you know, the, the team wasn't good enough and I need to make changes. And, and that, maybe not in those exact words, though that, that's kind of what I, the message I put across. I wonder where we would be this season if Steve didn't come down into the locker room and uh, have the stern conversation with us that he did. We knew at that point we had to improve massively if we wanted any chance of winning the league. The distance was probably getting a little bit too big, so December was absolutely crucial for us. Going into the Challenge Cup quarterfinals in Nottingham, we needed to at least keep it close, if not win that game. It's a bit of a new one for a lot of players coming in. They've never played that aggregate type game before. It's not a common thing in hockey. I think they all pretty much understood where we were at at that point. And the Nottingham Panthers are three to ahead. We felt good in that position, bring it back to the SSC, get our fans behind us and take care of business. We had 10 games, I think, we looked at over Christmas, and I think realistically we were thinking, if we get all 10, we're in the run. We're back in it. together a win streak like we did around that time that was extremely important and I think that we only needed uh, the teams ahead of us to, to start to slip up and then that pressure starts to mount. Every time we came into the locker room Kiefer was like just keep adding those points on the board. We started to make some changes behind the scenes and in that came the talks with Tyler Beskarani. When you have a proven goalie who has won in the past and who's a great addition to the locker room, it changes the way you play. You know that you're gonna get bailed out when you have someone back there more often than not. I started talking to Kiefer mid-December. When he asked me to come, it was good timing for me. It wasn't an easy couple of weeks after I had signed trying to get back into shape and especially during the Christmas time with the family and friends. Didn't know how it was gonna play with the goalie situation. Obviously, Peyton Jones had started to play really well. Jackson was all, always playing real well throughout the season. So we knew it was going to take some time for, for Besco to, to get up to game pace. And, and I think that you know, the, the three goalies was working there for a while. And we also brought in a few other key pieces and we just continued to roll. And we're off and running here at the SSC Arena. And an early penalty going the way of the Nottingham Panthers. Looks like Scott Conway is being called for interference. Not the ideal start. Being on the penalty kill early in the game, it was set up for disaster. A great interception by Gabe Boston. There's a chance for a goal and it's in. The Panthers get the first goal of the evening. The penalty was just over. Oh, it's another goal. 
Kept in front. It's 2-0. Found ourselves down, which we were already down a goal going into that aggregate. Scott Conway puts a chance on the board. Long with a shot. It's in. 2-2 on the evening. Puck breaks for Conway. Look at my tap. And it's in. And it's back to 3-2 and 5-5 on aggregate. Guys came out flying in that second period and ended up scoring a few crucial goals. Um, we just kept on clawing our way back one by one. Players, you could tell, understood what it meant and wanted to get that job done and, and put us through the semifinals. Little dish to the back door with a finish from David Schilper! It gives a chance, a two goal lead on aggregate, a three goal lead on the night, and now they face the Guilford Flames in the semi final. It's kept in front by Sean Norris! He gets his first goal as a Belfast Giant! Oh! Big shot again! The Giants are on the board with 2 0 night. Shots coming at us 3 0! Going into game one, we got the job done uh, exactly how we would have liked, but we know that Nottingham is not going to go away. They've played us tight and hard all year long. The Giants are victorious with a 5 2 score tonight. Going into game two, we gave Besco his first start of the season. I wanted it to be at home. I think it was a little bit easier to have that first game at home in front of the crowd and feeling good again and that confidence. It was a tough one. I was, I was probably not quite ready to come back and play it, but uh, the, the confidence came back pretty quickly. Yeah, he's probably not at full fitness for that second game, and he's taken it all the way to penalty shots, which is a real credit to him. You know, made some big saves. You know, it was frustrating, but we were happy with the overall weekend. Going into the semi-final, first leg in Guildford, we thought it was going to be tough going in there after multiple losses to, to the Guildford Flames. Oh, and given away, and an opportunity, and a goal! Garside, onwards towards Bast, it was a clever pass, and it's a clever goal. Goodwin onwards, opportunity, and it's in, it's a third. Bast will shoot, and it's a tremendous finish to cap off a quite fantastic night for the Giants. That whole 60-man performance was probably our best to date. Shot goes in from Britain, and it's going to be three. Blast, whistle saves, and again they go the third time. Another shot in, no score! Swept in by Joey Martin. Broken again, Callan, goal! We lost that game in the first 10 minutes. You know, we talked about that as a, as a team, and then we thought we rectified it going into Nottingham. Luke Ferrara finds the net, 3 0 Panthers. Giants come the other way, and it's a great shot. Giants have equalised, and Grant Cooper has his first goal for the Giants. And it's a big, big victory for the Belfast Giants. They were 3 0 down, and they come back and win by five goals to three. Second leg, Challenge Cup at home, 4-0 up. It's always hard to play like that. I think everybody plays a little tentative. That no-quit attitude that we have just want to show you what, what type of team this is and what type of character players we have in this room. 13 seconds into the third period, and the Belfast Giants are off and running at 2-1. Lights on, it's home! And they get it back within two, it's now 3-1 to the Guilford Flames. Belfast took the puck, David Goodman puts it home! The Belfast Giants are going back to the Challenge Cup final.
every time you play Sheffield doubleheader, those are going to have very big implications on how the league's going to finish up. You know, we've had some great battles with them over the years. They have a high-flying offense, a lot of big resumes on their team. To go into the first game, uh, Jackson Whistle played great. Team played well in front of them. We, we stole that one in regulation. The pucks just kept going in the net for me. I had David Goodwin just grinding away for me. Hot check for Scott Conway! And O was, was working his socks off to, to just to get the pucks back from their D. And it was just a great feeling to score uh, three goals in our rink with our fans. Going into game two, we knew that Sheffield was going to have a pushback. They needed to win that game. Another game where Besco, I think, was his real coming out party and, and getting back to fine form. Natal on a breakaway. Natal bangs the end by Besco Alani. And the cry go nuts, but Natal, the Patria of another save by Besco. Another shot, Besco with another save. Newman with an opportunity to tie things up for the Steelers. Fills up his feet, makes the save, Besco! Comes up big and he finished up with another shutout. What did you think of Daddy? The Bay of Jujuy Bay? Good. It's a great finish for the Flames. First goal of the evening. For the 20s! Henrik Eriksson puts the chance ahead 2-1 with his first goal in team. A 2-1 victory over the league leaders gets the Belfast Giants two points closer to the top. I thought our performance from start to finish on that night was great. And followed it up with a, a big win versus Fife the next night. And they have found the net. Stephen Howry gets the first goal of the game. Oh, and it's cleared up and it's fired oh. all the way down into the empty net and Giants will win this one. To go in there and get the job done there, that was a uh, big coming out of the break. And then to have to follow it up going on our second night into Guildford, that was a gutsy character performance. Ryan Tate, can he shoot? He can, and he scores! Kieran Long has come out with it and scored a screamer! Conway has made it three. Shot's gonna come oh, in, and it's a sixth for the Giants and it's becoming pretty ugly now for the home side. We went in there and absolutely destroyed him. It was a nice feeling in the changing room after the game. And now for the first time, we're sitting in first. Going to the Challenge Cup final, uh, everybody's excited. I think that that week uh, leading into that, it just sensed that the excitement was there. That the time was was now. That a trophy was right in front of us instead of uh, it being down the road. You can feel it. You can taste it. We knew that if we played our game and we played well, we would come out victorious. I couldn't sleep that night and thinking about, you know, hoisting a trophy with with all these guys that I had basically just met and a team that I had just come on to. It, it just felt like a, a blessing, so wanted to make the most of it.
Hey, I like Fife's fairy tale. I think it's fucking nice. All right, it's a nice story. They got here. First final ever, historic. That's fantastic, All right? Started this year, we had one fucking goal in mind. Three fucking trophies, the treble. That's it, All right? We don't fucking falter from that. And this is your first fucking chance to get the number one and check it fucking off. This team is standing in the way of something bigger for us. Who cares who we're playing? It's all about us right now. It's about the guy beside you here, right? One fucking game here. Let's get our best fucking effort for each other here, right? Full fucking 60 minutes, get the fucking job done. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Pitter batter, let's get at her. The Via Play Challenge Cup it's is a, underway. Easy. Here's Conway. Conway, well, you can see Easy. the matchup early Easy. on is Johansson against Conway as they try and frustrate number 10 in Teal. It'll probably take more than that, though. He's used to attention. Here's Conway. Conway, the good one score! Up top shelf where you keep the good whiskey. David Goodwin, the captain. It's one nothing Giants. Niles scores! It's Niles with a big goal. Chance, Ori, oh, what a play, he scores! Steve Ori, three, not in Giants. That's a great period, man. It starts with energy, right? And you got rewarded for it, but you got to humble yourselves now, right? This, this team was down 3-0 to Sheffield to get here, right? So humble yourselves right now, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. You go and you play the same way. This period is arguably the most important period right now because they're gonna have a pushback here. Let's go out there and fucking throw everything at them. Let's go, man. Lake to Rue up. Rue up with a long range and it bounces out from McLeod scores! Right on cue, Matty McLeod, his first career Challenge Cup goal. It's four, nothing tied. Well, tense moments on that fight bench. As you can see there, Andy Dalton pointing to center ice. Good goal. Emmerdahl scores! Puck to Twine, oh so fine. Emmerdahl with his shot, traffic in front. It's a 4-1 hockey game. Long, good hip check there on Sherman out front. Oh, Kibalani scores! Well, out of the corner, Chris Lawrence to Kibalani. 4-2 hockey game. Twenty fucking minutes away from our fucking goal number one. Let's fucking go get it. Out front, locking it. Well, a gift, a gift from Vescaro Wani. Cheers, Long scores. Kieran Long answers back instantly. Ruop labored to go to the bench. Here's a chance for Cooper. Scores. Grant Cooper lets it fly from the point. Shane Owen never saw it. David Gilbert around from Finn Page. And a shot from Gilbert goes home. And that'll do it, 9-3. Once like the five minute mark left in the third, you kind of started looking around the crowd and seeing that uh, it was gonna be another uh, trophy for Belfast. You got to soak that in and enjoy it. so hard from the beginning of the season to get that final game at home and all of a sudden you're raising the trophy in front of uh, 8,000 strong at, at the arena. Being able to 
hoist that trophy in front of the crowd was unbelievable experience again. We'll always remember that day for the rest of our lives and we made a lot of great memories that night. Coming out of the Challenge Cup final, obviously you're a little worried about the little celebration hangover because it's a midweek game. We have to go and play against a very good Coventry team. We were hopeful that we would get the four points against Coventry at home because I think we were 4-0 and against them going into that doubleheader. And we'd, we'd clawed them back a couple times where there were three or four goals up on us in Coventry. And on the first night here, I think we beat them comfortably. And I, there was a feeling maybe on that on that next night that they were just a, they, they were going to be a team that we found a way to beat on every occasion and, and when we lost that second night against Coventry and you looked at the standings and you saw who was coming up that was make or break time for us because in my head we needed those two points in the bank to get to where we needed to be you couldn't count on Guilford dropping points because they, they kept going. That Sheffield away game in their uh, arena was was definitely a defining moment for us. We needed to go in there and get the job done. I feel like the first period was kind of back and forth and Britain didn't really know where it was going to go. And then, you know, if we can weather a storm with this team and, you know, keep a game in hand, nobody can keep up with us. And we proved that against Sheffield in that game. David Phillips makes the block, but the puck gets through. It's the power play goal for the Giants. The Steelers short-handed. The wall for Lake. Shot from the top of the circle finds its way in. Greenfield unsighted, and the Giants double their lead. And then the long shot gets through. Looks like it got a deflection from Conway. This is Mark Cooper. The net is empty, and that is that. The Belfast Giants have a fourth. 4-0 win in Sheffield, that was another one that uh, really put a, uh, a dash in the hopes of, of Sheffield's league title chase and continued to propel ours. And then to go into Manchester building, very tough place to play. Uh, the guys got the job done there, no questions asked. For us to, to win both those that weekend the way that we did, I thought was, was a statement that, you know, we're in it for the long haul here. Regardless of the grind of the season, you know, we're not going away. It's a Fabrics weekend, Johnson Green, the Cardiff Devils and White. We knew that they were going to give it their all. They, they still had a bit of hope before that weekend and they wanted to win that title and, and for them to be able to do that, they, they probably had to come in and win both games and so, you know, we got on them early in game one. What a finish! Scott Conway makes it 3-0! The first game of the weekend ends up with two points for the Stanline Belfast Giants. Going into game two, it was a, a must win for the Cardiff Devils. Richardson, down low, tip the front, chance there, it's in! The Cardiff Devils are on the board. 111 gone in the first period. What a finish for the Cardiff Devils, it's now 2-0. McLeod looks to get a hold of it, it's three! Matt McLeod answers the Devils goal straight back. Crandall in all alone, tries to go forehand back and he slots it home. It's 3-1. In between period breaks, we talked about the importance of, of not giving up here and not allow ourselves to be tired. They came out, they took the game back over. It's all tied at the SSC Arena. A power play goal for the Giants. It's in past Beskarwani. I thought he had it initially, but it's a 4-3 lead for Devils. There's a big chance and it's in! Scott Conway ties things up with his 52nd goal of the season. It's 4-4. Some would say that we stole a point off of them just with that character we have in that room and, and getting everybody on the same page and, and you know not leaving anything on the table. You know, emptying that, that gas tank to go out and, and get that one point was massive for us. Waller getting some well-deserved ice time this evening, no three on three. Fast skater, now he's in all alone. Tries to get in behind, he's taken down. And there's a penalty upcoming against Besker Awani. I didn't think that was a penalty that I, I took on, on Waller. 
Crawford to Sanford. They're going to swap positions. Man coming out front now is Joey Martin. Back to Crawford to the outside. Big shot. What a finish. The Devils get the winning goal. It's OT winner. I decided to uh, let my emotions out, I guess you could say, and uh, break my stick a couple times. It probably wasn't my proudest moment to go out and do what I did. I was actually going back to get my water bottle to bring to the bench, but I knew if I grabbed that water bottle, it wasn't making it to the bench, so um, I decided to take a little more anger out on the net. To see Vesco breaking his stick and pushing the net over, um, you know, that, that frustrated me to see him after how well he played for us. A little bit of uh, frustration boiled over onto the door uh, on the bench, and um, we'll just leave it at that. You know, the job wasn't done. We had another big weekend coming up uh, against Sheffield and Manchester at home. First game, Sheffield, we know it's going to be a, a tough challenge. Sheffield coming in with any league hopes, they need to win those games. But I thought our guys were dialed in, they were ready, uh, and really took it to the Sheffield Steelers. Valorant tips it around behind the net, back up the wall, and Ari steals the puck away. Lovely pass to Kushka, Conway's in. Conway the shot! Oh my word! What a finish! The first shot on goal, we're 36 in! Cooper into the zone, gets Conway at the back door, looking for a tip in front! What a goal! Great play by Conway! Mark Cooper right on the doorstep. Norris comes out to the left side, right handed, steps in, short handed, he puts it home past Greenfield, his second of the night, and the Giants extend their lead. It's now 8 2. To beat Sheffield 8 2 is a lot of fun. Um, you know, obviously they weren't too happy about it. Going into the Manchester game, we we knew that had Dundee won and and we won, that that, that would be the league title celebrated on our home ice. Scott Conway! I don't know how many times I've said this this season. It's an absolute delight. After the first period, we spoke about the fact that we didn't like our first period. We felt that we, we didn't come out with energy we needed. And Dundee was also up 3-0 on Guilford. Goody's looking at me at the bench, what's the score? And I'm going, he goes, Dundee. I said, yeah, Dundee. And I, he said, oh, come on, Dundee. And I'm like, boys, you just got to go out and win your game. Don't worry about anybody else, you know, because funny things have happened, you know. That team have come back all year and won, and they did. Oh. Gilbert with a great finish, his second goal of the night. Erickson, Erickson between the legs! <laughs> it's nice. I held a lot of pressure on Guilford tomorrow to fucking do that all over again. Great fucking job putting that pressure on them. Two is the number. Let's go! Let's go. We knew that we only needed two points out of that final weekend versus Guilford and Dundee to get the job done. There's not many seasons where you can go through and, and have the schedule where you've got a deciding game on home ice almost on the last weekend of the season, essentially. I remember sitting in the fixtures meeting in May, June, the summer before, and we got to the end of the scheduling and we still needed a game on that Saturday night. Like There was no home game on that weekend and the fixture meeting dragged for another hour to an hour and a half because we needed to get a game on that and nobody wanted to move the schedule and, and, and it just turned out like conversations I was sitting next to Kirk from Guilford and he was able to maneuver a couple games uh, earlier in the season to allow us to have a home game that weekend against Guilford and at the time we had no idea that, that was going to be such an important game. The week leading up to the Guilford championship game, you know, there was a little bit of scoreboard watching, you know, a lot of guys were crunching math. The 
day of the game, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it was probably one of the biggest games I've ever played in. Oh, I was so excited to play that game. You speak to anybody in the team, and every time I try to go to bed early, I'll just think about like how excited I, <laughs> how excited it would be if we won the game on that night. There was a laser focus in the room. Everybody obviously knew the stakes, and you know, one versus two for the for the title. There was a sense of confidence in the room that we're going to end this tonight. Discipline playoff game tonight, boys, right? We're staying above, we're tracking back hard, we're shutting these guys down. We're gonna own the middle of the ice, right? You own the middle of the ice tonight, then they're gonna have to struggle to get in and get set up, right? Hammer home at our process tonight. Non-stop, that should always be in your mind. Smother these guys offensively. It's a sellout at SSC Arena. The Giants, well, they've won back-to-back -back titles, and right now, standing in their way, is the Guilford Flames. I feel like the second my skates hit the ice, I was ready to go, and I feel like our team definitely was was buzzing from from the first puck drop. Underway at SSC Arena, and the Giants will get the first touch. Whenever McLeod is coming down that wing, he's been provided a, a handful of issues for the Flames. Here's Lake. Lake goes the back and scores. Once we scored that first goal, I don't think we were going to let go of it. No harm done. Here's Bob. Bob. Bob with the shot. Score! A laser of a wrist shot from Bob. That's the second of the season. Two nothing Giants. All right. That's a good period, man. Right? We're dialed in. That's nice to see. That team's going to melt down. You, you keep staying this way, they will melt down. You keep your discipline, they will melt down. Then you fucking sting them, where it counts, right? Stay fucking humble here. Zero, zero now going into this period, reset. Right, Besco, zero, zero. Let's go here, man. Let's go here, boys, same fucking start. Hey, let's put some more fucking hay in the barn. Cronella into the middle of the ice. Here's Lalonde, chops it into McNulty. Out front, here's a chance and a good block there. And Fredericks, Cronella! Cronella on the follow-up, tucks it into the roof of the net, power play goal, and Guilford, it's Cronella's 21st. That becomes a dangerous moment once you, they bring it back to 2-1. Ruop looking for a redirect, but that shot was wide. Here's Conway. Conway plays it back. Back and shot, scores! Henrik Eriksson, 3-1 hockey game. Dangerous pass up the middle, and Niles keeps it in. Erickson goes to the front of goal, it'll redirect, Erickson scores! Henrik Erickson, showtime goal! 4-1 Giants! Three on two, back the other way, here's McLeod. McLeod with the shot, scores! A dart into the top corner! Giants in control! That's another big period there, right? Like, I mean, honestly, regardless of the way the rest of this game goes, like, Super fucking proud to stand behind the bench and watch you guys play. It's fantastic. That team right there is a very good fucking hockey team, and they deserve to be here. But right now, you're making them look like they fucking don't belong on the same ice as you. This period now, the frustrations are high in there, right? They have come back from behind, so they have belief. Eyes on the fucking prize. That's what it is, boys. 20 fucking miles, 20 fucking smiles. Let's go get it, boys. Let's go get it. on the verge of some history. Can they hold on? Here's Goodwin. Goodwin with some room. Goodwin in front, deflected by Ori. Ori with his 10th power play goal of the season, his 26th league goal. That'll just about do it. 6-1 Giants. We kind of started celebrating on the bench with maybe six or seven minutes left. Guys were hugging. Guys were, you know, showing their appreciation for everyone. And all of a sudden, eight months of, of grinding it out paid off. Are we really doing this again? Like, this is amazing. Listen to the crowd at SSC Arena! History in the making! A third league title in a row! A sixth EIHL crown for Adam Keith's men!
this one in, f in front of the fans was something I won't forget. Just the rink at 8,000 capacity was, was amazing. The best part of being a coach is to see these players' hard work pay off over the course of eight months. Now they get to, to finally enjoy that trophy and to be on the ice to, to watch and, and experience that and, and to see the fans celebrate, um, that's extra special. The captain, David Goodwin, raise it to the rafters, Goody! Three in a row for the Belfast Giants! A win tonight and you skate together forever! I do think the marathon of a 54 game season uh, and the emotions and the ups and downs that we've had along the way is draining. So pushing that on button again after you turn it off to relax after you've got that trophy is not easy. Coming off of the league title win with really only a full week to prepare before playoffs, you know, we knew it was going to be a, a tough challenge, especially with Glasgow playing playoff hockey just to make the playoffs and they were playing for each other, so we knew that it was going to be a tough challenge. Having that two goal lead going into the second game, you know, was a, a great cushion to have, especially in an aggregate score, you know, going into that second game. We just need to make sure that we take care of the job and work at uh, keeping our lead. And Scott Conway sweeps in the opening goal. Takes it inside. Second goal for the club. Beskarawani stops, it's all over. But my goodness, what an effort from the Glasgow clan over the last six periods. Belfast Giants go to Nottingham. If you get through those two games, it's flipping a coin. You know, you're a one-off game on a Saturday, one-off game on a Sunday. If you have a hot goalie or if your power play's clicking, you can win the playoffs. Going into that game, we thought we had a good week of practice, uh, a good final preparation week. Everybody was kind of excited just to get there. We knew that the buzz around the building would kind of get us going. In years gone by, I have like butterflies in my stomach before the semi-final game, the final game. But this year, it was a, just a weird feeling. It's the best kind of hockey. Two teams going at it one-on-one. -on -one. Only one team can come out on the other side, and I think that that's the kind of games that people want to watch, and it's the kind of games that we want to be a part of. Kenya off the referee's kick, Goodwin pounces. Goodwin to Ori, Ori scores! What a laser on the shot from Ori! It's 1 0 Giants! Tucked down by Norris! Norris on a delayed penalty coming up to the Panthers. That'll be washed out as Norris slots it home. 2 0 Belfast! What a pass by Long to Lake. Lake shot scores! Lake up top shot for you. Keep the good whiskey. 3 nothing Belfast. Here's a chance out front. Goodies from Hopkins! Hopkins with his first playoff goal!
Conway. Trying to work against Brady. Brady plays a terrible pass out front. Goodwin. Goodwin intercepts a terrible pass out front for the Panthers, and Goodwin slots it home. Four one the Giants. Summers to Hammond. Hammond to Brady. Brady with a point black chance. They score. Anderson. Anderson slots home the rebound. Four two hockey game. This period is gonna go to the team that's willing to fucking battle. That's it, right? Because we lost some battles down there in our zone and that's why we got hemmed in. We gotta win those fucking battles and we gotta get our feet moving. Hey, right? that's it. Let's go boys, let's go here. 20 hard here, get her done. Quick up to Gilbert. Gilbert's got Lake going to the goal. Gilbert with a shot, it bounced off of Lake. Lake! Wow, Lake slotted it home. Peyton Jones has been washed out instantly on the ice. It is a good goal. Here's his Oscar scores! Yaka is asking! Panthers back in his 5 3 hockey game. Dumps it in Jones. Came out to play, it goes in! Oh, a terrible, terrible moment! Eight seconds remaining. The treble will remain alive for the Belfast Giants. The league and cup champions are gonna go to the grand final on Sunday. They tested us. Besco stood strong for us and gave us that chance to win, and we were clinical with our scoring there in that game to make sure that we got through uh, to the finals. Whether we got Sheffield or Cardiff, we knew that both those teams are very good on paper, and I think we were 5-1 and one against Sheffield in the season. You would think that that would be our better odds to play against Sheffield, but you know, the moment Cardiff won, almost that excitement of the, this is the way it should be. After what happened last year, to be able to play against the same team and play against Cardiff again, I think it was something that we really wanted to complete that trouble against them. We knew that they were going to give us the best hockey game, and I felt that playing against Cardiff was going to really test us. Empty the tank for each other tonight. Everything for each other. That's it, right? The hay is in the barn. There's a reason why we put that slogan on there, because you guys for eight months have done the work. You're league champions for a reason, right? Now all that's left to do is to come in here and perform like we know we can. Shut this team down, smother their offense, right? That's it. This team deserves it. You're going to go out there and fucking take over the game right from fucking shift number one here, boys, right? Ready for action at Motor Point Arena. Better paddle, let's get out of the grand final is underway. Here we go, QA, nice and simple and early here. We knew Cardiff was going to come out hard. Ben Downs was playing well, Beskarani was playing well. Uh, it was just kind of a back and forth duel. Come down, guys, let's go. Jardine goes down, here's Cooper. Cooper with a chance on the wrap, and it comes off the pad of bounds, and with nine seconds remaining, here comes Cox. Cox on a counterattack to Sanford. Sanford, right out of time, that ball, just scores! Ever since we started playoffs, you've been playing all right. That's it, just all right hockey. That team, Maybe had 30 big hits. They want it more than you. That's it. That's why we're losing right now. They want it more than you. You don't think you have more? I'm telling you, you have a lot fucking more to give. You have to compete for pucks. Play your game. Fucking play your game. That's it. I'll compete these guys. Richardson, the two captains, Richardson and Goodwin, in a good board battle. Garside. Slides it along to Jeff Baum. Baum, long wrist shot, scores! Baum with the wrist shot. That was good for a presence from Conway, and Baum's never saw it. One one hockey game. Move your feet here, boys. Move your feet. Get to the net, drop it. Yeah! My dad sends me a text before every game. 
and says, shoot the puck, plain and simple, night and day. And I think that's something that everybody just has to do. You never know when you're gonna get lucky and the puck's gonna find the back of the net. Any chance I get the opportunity to help out on the front end, it's just an extra plus. And I think Gary made an incredible play there on the blue line to find me. And you know, I was yelling, no, no, no. And he just made an incredible play. Gary's on the boards and everyone's going deep, deep, deep. Next minute, pops it through his legs, straight to Bomber, boom. Top cheese, I thought, what a pass. Eyes on the prize, boys, right? Let them take a dumb penalty. Let's focus, keep our energy for what's needed for. A little bit of traffic, Con stands right in front of the fucking goalie. Fucking direct shot by Bomber, boom, 1-1. One, one. All of a sudden, life, right? We need to find another level now, right? You think you're, you think you're fucking nearing empty tank? Fuck that. We found out fucking months ago in this building, you have another level. You got another gear. You just gotta find it. It's all about fucking passion. That's all it is. Empty the tank for each other. Fucking 20 minutes, right? That fucking process has been getting us there all fucking year. You guys have been doing it. We know how to do it. Play the right way, and you're gonna get fucking rewarded here, boys, in a big way. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Puck is down. Third period. Is it go? Corey. Into the corner. Goodwin. Trying to take the feet from Conway. Had to go down on his knee. That springs Crandall back the other way. Crandall gets his pocket pick almost too softly there by Ori. Here's Goodwin. Back for Ori. Ori's in all the Steve Ulrey's been fantastic for us this season. He's a player that fought through a lot of adversity early on. What a finish uh, on Ben Bounds. It was one-way traffic from that point on. That's a fucking big one, oh, that's a hell of a fucking time. Buck skipped away from Crawford. Seven and a half remaining in the third period. Britton puts a shoulder in, here's Cooper. Cooper drops it, no! I just remember coming onto the ice and Bassett came down the wall and made a good pinch. He made a spectacular pass to Coop to begin with and, and actually when I came off the bench, Coop even had me sold that he was shooting that puck and I was going to the net for a rebound but all of a sudden it popped out in front of me and I don't know if I closed my eyes or blacked out or what happened. We're doing it! Fucking doing it! From then on out, everybody just went out there on a mission to make sure that Cardiff had no life, no energy, no chance to score a goal. Seven miles, men! Keep pushing here! Play the right way and get rewarded! Inside three minutes remaining in the third period, Giants with a 3-1 lead over the Cardiff Devils. The Devils looking for an unprecedented fourth playoff title in a row, but it's not going to happen because Cooper, Cooper with the empty goal! Ice. Grant Cooper trying to work against Jardine. Ten seconds remaining. Britton out wide to Richardson. Richardson will just launch it in. Bester White turns it aside. Just a couple of seconds remaining. Back and dust it. A season for the ages. The grand slam and complete the treble. And such is the class and the measure of this organization. And that man, he was your captain. He's now a legendary coach. And he puts the number 12 for Ray Sawada on the playoff trophy. Ladies 
And there's the captain. He's raised two. He's got his hands on the playoff trophy for the first time since 2010. The Belfast Giants will skate off into the summer with that final piece of silverware. Yeah, I, I don't like celebrating very often, you know. Um, but three times is fucking fantastic. To be able to celebrate it with everybody is just an incredible feeling. Something that I'll never forget and I'll always take with me for the rest of my life and it'll be a highlight of my uh, career for a long, long time. It's been 13 years since Belfast has won the playoffs. So to be able to do that and, and get our hands on that third trophy uh, for Kiefer, for Gary, the guys that have been here for for a lot of, a long time, longer, Laker, all those guys, it was it was pretty spectacular. Uh, Gary took me under his wing for the last two years and has helped me out a lot both on the ice and off the ice. You know, this year was definitely a struggle. To get back playing with Gary was just awesome. To have him behind me and supporting me was just <laughs> really cool. To have a guy like Gary, who's been around so long, seen so much hockey, a guy from Scotland still playing hockey and a guy from Texas playing hockey together, it's just crazy. I signed Adam Keefe as, as a coach, and I'd been trying to convince him for a few years to take up the coaching role. He was still, he still thought there was gas in the tank playing. We knew that he was going to be an unbelievable leader, like, and, and that is, I think that's what brings you success. You surround yourself with good people and good leaders, and you find a way, and that's, that's exactly what Adam does. He just finds a way. You know, he, if there's a hurdle, he jumps over it or he goes through it. He's just a winner, and he's shown it with the trophies he's lifted, and, and he absolutely bleeds steel, so we're so fortunate to have him. Three words to sum up the season. <sighs> Grind perseverance magical roller coaster um, belief integrity stressful rewarding and um, excitement adversity reveals character got it done adversity togetherness and perseverance Thank God it's over. That's more than three. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs>